Well, we're tracking all the day's major developments, including this big number catching our eye today. Nearly 9.5 million children have tested positive for COVID-19 since the pandemic began. 10% of them in the last week alone. Staggering numbers. And Dr. Darian Sutton joins me now from Los Angeles. He's in for ABC Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Jen Ashton. Welcome, Dr. Sutton. So great to always see you. One of the telltale signs or common symptoms of Omicron is a sore or scratchy throat. So some doctors are advising that throat swabs over nose swabs would be better and they would be wielding yield more accurate results on COVID-19 tests. What do you think of that? You know, this is something that's really commonly seen. In my experience, that's anecdotal. I've seen a lot of patients come in with the Omicron variant, and there are more presentations of this sore throat, but we don't yet have the official data to conclude that that's definitely an accurate symptom. Uh, many people are discussing maybe the virus is replicating more in the throat than the nasal passages, and that's what led to the, the logic of doing throat swabs. And there have been studies on this, but those studies are mainly focused on PCR studies, not those rapid antigen tests that we do at home. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why we can't immediately run to rapid antigen tests and swab the throat. One of them being that the throat has a different level of acidity than our nasal passages, and that might create a false positive. Also, the thickness or viscosity of fluid in our throat is different from that of our nose, so that might also make inconclusive results. And then most importantly, the location is not completely uh, validated yet, whether that be along your gums or along your cheek. And also, uh, doing a throat swab in the back of your throat by yourself can be a little dangerous. So right now, I would avoid it, but hopefully Hopefully we'll get more information soon. So a, a lot to think about then, but do you think that there could come a point where throat swabs will become widely available? I do, and I'm hoping that the FDA is working on validating that as well as saliva samples, because if that were to come to, into play, we can use that in households, for example, in testing multiple children, for example, at one time as a form of surveillance. So I'm hopeful that we'll get more information and data on that soon. All right, we'll be watching that. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.